Hello everybody and welcome back to another Abigail Page Designs gardening vlog. And yes, I am in a different location. I'm actually at work and that's because I have my whole gardening vlog edited and I don't have an intro because it just it happens folks. I'm like continuously filming so it doesn't ever occur to me to oh yeah I need to make an intro oh yeah I need to make an outro like it's just infinite it doesn't end so that is why I so frequently forget my intros and outros for the gardening vlogs but I was like I have this whole video edited and I need the intro because I would really like to get it uploading as it takes hours so here we are at work filming an intro. Speaking of work, you will hear more about my job actually quite soon. So make sure you stay tuned because there's lots of exciting announcements to come. That said, this gardening vlog was super fun to edit. We jam-packed a lot into this vlog. There's a bit of transplanting, there's pruning, there's a trip out to my animal barn, there's updates, so yeah, let's just jump right in and I hope you guys enjoy. and welcome back to my greenhouse. So my sprouts are getting way too big for their little pots that I have them in and my mom was like if you don't plant those soon they're gonna die. I was like I know I know I had been working a lot and so anyways I didn't get to it but today I was finally home so I'm going to move them into the greenhouse's raised garden beds I have, I'm pretty sure the spinach and the cilantro are sprouted. The parsley is not, unfortunately, but you know what? I'll take it. I got cilantro and I got spinach. I'll leave the parsley sprouts to see if, and I'll just like keep watering them, see if they maybe happen to come up later. But uh, yeah, I need to move the spinach and I need to move the cilantro. So I thought, hey, you know what? Why not film like a time lapse of me doing it? Here they are. See, they're getting super straggly and they're choking themselves. <laughs> some of them have three, some of them have four. I definitely went a little overboard with the seeds. So yeah, they're gonna have to go right in this empty spot here. Thankfully we moved all our tomatoes out so there's plenty of room for them to grow. And yeah, I'm super excited. I can't wait to see if I actually get cilantro and spinach out of this because I've been loving spinach in my eggs and I've been loving spinach in my smoothies. So I'm super, super excited. And then cilantro ugh, on a salad, so good. So let's get this party started. Now, before I moved any of the spinach, or any of the plants for that matter, I went ahead and added a nice layer of some cow manure. I believe I used the brand Bacato. If I'm able to find it online, I will leave it linked below for you guys. The soil was pretty dry and looked deplete of nutrients, so um, my hope with the cow manure was that it would help add some of those vitamins and minerals that plants need to grow.
After I dug my holes, I went ahead and added more cow manure into the holes and then some water and stirred it around to create like a mud mixture. That way there would already be both some nutrients and a little bit of moisture right at the plant's root system when I go to put it in the hole because you really want that plant to take root as soon as possible. The faster it takes root, the faster it grows, and the faster you have fresh veggies. Now, am I the only one that finds gardening so incredibly relaxing to watch? I know that it's pretty repetitive, but gosh, there is something so incredibly satisfying about watching somebody play in the mud and play in the dirt. I don't know what it is, but if you guys feel the same way, then let me know below. Okay, so I just finished planting all of the spinach. Um, I only had three sprout, which I guess I thought I had more, but nope, it's all cilantro. So I am debating how much space to give my spinach before I move into the cilantro side of things. Huh. Maybe I do... Let me think about this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm gonna clear this area right here and then they're gonna go right in this part of the bed. I don't know where I'm gonna put all of it. And just like that, I jumped into it, kind of repeating the same steps with the as I did with the spinach. But instead, this time, I had a lot more plants to transplant into the raised bed. So I was trying to move pretty quickly because, yes, your girl just can't seem to make it out to the greenhouse much before 4 o'clock, and it was starting to get dark. Parsley, cilantro, and I have a little back history. I actually tried to plant both of these plants last year in my outside garden bed, but those did not go well at all. They never got much higher than my ankle, and I still to this day have no idea what I did wrong. I'm really hoping and praying that this time all goes well. I, I seriously have no idea what I did wrong last year. I mean, I felt like I was doing everything right. I even asked my mom, I'm like, why are these plants so incredibly straggly and why aren't they growing more like a bush as I've seen in pictures of parsley and cilantro? Instead, they're growing like a tree. I just, I don't know. But we're going to retry this and hopefully I succeed. Alright, so update time. I figured it had been a while since I updated you guys on my banana tree and my tropical plant area. And um, yeah, so my banana tree has some leaves that, it's actually it's original leaves that it came with like in the when I unboxed it. So they finally decided that it was time for them to pass away and they 
are just sucking energy from the plant at this point. They're not helping it in any way, shape, or form. So I did my research on how to prune them off. And yeah, I'm a little bummed because the first one that I ever pruned, I actually pruned it wrong. Oops, but you know what? You learn from your mistakes and it's still standing here today, so it's okay. But these ones I'm gonna do the right way and I'm gonna show you guys how I do it. So here are the two leaves that I'm talking about. These guys came when I like actually bought the banana and they came damaged already. So I'm surprised they've lasted this long, but it's time. They're, uh, they're not doing this plant any good. So according to the video I watched, um, he just took a kind of like a spade thing. I don't have one of those, so I'm just gonna use a butter knife. <laughs> Uh, my banana plant is smaller than what his was anyways. And basically you just cut in an upward motion. It's like one solid chop and it's supposed to just fall right off. So let's hope that's the case. And if you're wondering where you make the cut, because I was concerned about this, I have, it's kind of a, an interesting plant in that you, the leaves or the stalk are directly connected. They're what form the stalk. So I didn't know how far down you're supposed to cut, but apparently you just cut it right where the banana leaf is bending. So I will show you guys what I'm talking about um, in case you're confused. Okay, so you make your slice right in between this guy right here. So you're gonna want um, to leave a little bit because apparently if you don't, it can actually snap your banana tree in half when it goes to fruit. None of this was uh, concluded on my own. I had to watch and research a lot before I did this, so I cannot take the credit, but I'm going to show you guys what I learned and let you know if it actually works. But yeah, let's do this. I'm going to give you guys a close-up and... Yeah, I'm just gonna do what I was shown. You just snap it right off. All right, ready? One, two, three. Oh, <laughs> that was not as easy as it looks. One, two, three. We're just gonna saw it, you know what? I don't have one of those sharp tools, so. You're just supposed to cut upward. That was the one thing. All right, there we go, guys. No turning back now. Next one. Almost there. I'm sure you guys out there that are excellent planters are probably cringing at me right now. Okay, I do apologize. My hair is uh, wild right now, but um, I cut off two of the leaves. The other one that I have my eye on is in the back and it's not quite bending yet. So I'm actually gonna leave it for now and wait till I am absolutely sure that I'm gonna cut it in the right place. A uh, handy tip for this, I will probably not be using a butter knife again. I would opt to use something sharper, maybe just a sharper kitchen knife or something, uh, because it is a little tougher than it looks and it was a lot harder to slice it like the guy did in the video. So I won't use a butter knife again. Now the other thing I wanted to mention you to you on is that I noticed a couple maybe a week ago that the leaves of my banana tree were starting to get droopy. So I did a lot of troubleshooting last night and I think that the, I'm just underwatering it because the, like the tips are browning and stuff. And I only water it once a week right now. So it's really not a whole ton. So when I stuck my finger in the soil, because it's so root bound, I'm not wondering if maybe it just needs more water. So we're gonna start there and pray that I'm right. My other assumption is that maybe it's trying to go dormant, hence the dying leaves, but uh, I know that they only go dormant for what, one to two months. So 
both cases seemed okay to me. I guess I would prefer the underwatering to be the case because I think my banana tree losing all of its leaves would freak me out. But as always, I will keep you posted on it. And before I head out here, I actually need to change the towel out that I have my banana tree pot sitting on to like soak up any water because it's really dirty and it's wet and yucky. So I brought another towel with me and I figured I would let you guys watch me as I move the banana tree and change out the towel. This had to be one of the most awkward plant things I've ever had to do because, oh my gosh, my banana plant is, or tree, whatever, I it's so top heavy that moving it is really quite a hassle. And then on top of that, I also have a fake plant that I have my grow lights sitting in. And that thing almost came crashing down on me. It took many attempts and fails to successfully pull the towel out from underneath it. And from which then I had a bunch of dirt all over the floor. So I had to vacuum that up before I could put a fresh towel down and move the banana back to its home. So my banana tree is, should be all set now. I'm gonna toss these towels in the wash because they smell and I'm gonna throw my banana leaves away. I wish I could save them. Well, actually, you know what? I might give them to the chickens because it, in the video that I watched, he said that animals love the pruned banana leaves. So I don't know, his dog was eating it and I was like, ugh. That's yeah, it tastes terrible, but you know what? I don't know. I also read an article that you can fry up the banana leaves or grill them, so I don't know. I don't know how I feel about this, eating the banana leaf. I've only ever eaten a banana. <laughs> but in theory, I mean, less waste, the better, so I am going to save them. I'll have to let you guys know if my animals enjoy these or if they look at them and go, seriously, what is this? All right, I'm walking out to the barn. I got my banana leaves. And yes, it's snowing and I'm so happy about it. Can't you tell? And after I give these guys to the goats, I'm going to take you into the greenhouse because I have some frustrating news and I cannot wait to uh, share it with you. Welcome to the animal barn. I'm gonna turn on the lights. And here's the goats. Hey, how are you, chickadee? All right, let me give you these banana leaves. Ready? You want it? Oh, Rascal wants it. Mmm, yummy. <laughs> Here, grab it. Hey, I gotta give some to the little Kit Kat. Here. Oh, Holy cow! That guy wasn't kidding. They do like them. Wow, that is so strange to me. I can't believe they actually eat them. Does that taste good? Hey, don't eat my phone. Excuse me. Is your head itchy? Now my phone has slobber all over it. That's gross. Well, I hope you guys liked it. Happy Sunday. All right, to the greenhouse we go. Ignore my extremely wild hair. It has just not been a good hair day. I'm sure you guys have plenty of those yourselves. But I am in the greenhouse because I have some not so exciting news. I was hoping that I would never have to go through with this strawberry drama ever again, but um, the strawberry plant is trying to grow back 
And with it are coming the aphids because I kid you not, these things are going to be the death of me and all my plants. Seriously. I already finished all my other gardening to do's for the day. So this is the last thing that I'm going to do. So that way I don't transfer any sort of eggs or anything to any of my other plants. But guess what? My cabbage plants that I planted in my first gardening vlog, if you haven't watched that, go check it out. I will leave it linked below for you guys. Um, they are growing and they're still, it's a slow process because obviously it's winter, but I kid you not, I came in the greenhouse this morning and there's aphids over, all over at least two or three of them. And it's gross. It looks like the plant version of head lice. And I am so frustrated. I have no idea what to do at this point. I am gonna get some gardening consolation from my mom before I go and do anything because she knows a little bit more than I do about the whole pest situation. But if she uh, decides that they are in fact aphids, I'm going to try the one and only thing that I didn't try, and that's neem oil. It says right on it that it controls black spot, powdery mildew, rust, spider mites, aphids, white flies, and other insect pests. So <laughs> let's pray guys, let's pray. I am so over these things, you have no idea. I actually love neem oil, so I hope this works for the aphids because it is literally my go-to product. No, hashtag not sponsored but I use this every single week in my garden. I squirt my banana tree with it. I squirt my coffee plant. I squirt all of my house plants with it. Um, and it just helps prevent, you know, all of the yucky stuff that you don't want in a garden. So my mom is here and I'm going to let you guys know in a second what the diagnosis is. So here are the little dudes I'm talking about. I'm gonna have to wash my phone after this stupid things. Uh, focus. Yep, I was right, aphids. She wasn't so sure at first either, so we just both googled it, and I've looked them up before, obviously, so I was almost sure, but I wanted somebody else's advice on it, and she said, spray away. So, neem oil it is. Seriously, I cannot even believe these disgusting creatures. I really hope this neem oil does the trick. I'm going to spray the heck out of them. I will say this product smells absolutely terrible. So if you have a sensitive nose uh, like me, then just try not to inhale it. I'm pretty sure it has sulfur in it, so it just smells like, kind of like a porta potty, you know? Disgusting, gross. Leave my plants alone. Okay, I gave them a very thorough squirt. I'm probably gonna come back out here, I'm gonna say two days from now and do it again and again and again and again until I see no more bugs. I'm hoping that maybe they'll just die off. I know that they turn white when they die because that's what I went through with the strawberry plant. So um, yeah, let's just pray for white bugs. <laughs> While I'm out here in the greenhouse, I'm actually going to squirt my strawberry plant too because why not? I mean, I kind of give up on it. I know that's terrible to say because it's just so sick. Um, I would repot it, but it's obviously out of season, so I will probably wait till spring and then decide what I'm actually going to do with it because it is still alive and it's trying to grow strawberries and the poor thing is just failing miserably because of these aphids. I apologize, the lighting over here is not super great, but yeah, I can assure you there's still living aphids on this thing and it just irks me every time I look at it. It's worth a shot, you know. I don't know, my friends. We shall see. I will keep you updated and let you know if anything changes. But for now, 
that's uh, that's where I stand. So glad that all my plants for the most part in the house are doing okay because this greenhouse is just causing me all sorts of gardening drama right now. My spinach plants that I transplanted did not survive the move to the big raised garden bed which I know that it's winter so I just have to be, you know, I just got to be patient with myself and say, oh, you know what, it's almost February, which means March is on its way, which means that April will soon be here, and then I can start uh, actually having a successful garden, hopefully. And until then, I think I'm just going to stick to my indoor plants and try my best with these cabbages. They, uh, at this rate, they're probably going to not have cabbages till June, but you know what, that's all right. They're green and they're alive. And I will probably end the gardening vlog here. So thank you guys so much for coming along with me as I go through all thick and thin gardening experiences, honestly. I have learned a lot through uh, my greenhouse adventures and my houseplant adventures, and I hope that you guys have too. Let me know in the comments below if there is any sort of gardening content you would like me to create or if you have any questions, I will try my best to help you answer them because gardening is a community effort and you know what? You need other gardeners to learn and to grow successful plants. Leave a like on this video if you have ever dealt with aphids and uh, if you have any helpful advice, please leave below. I am more than willing to listen and take it. And last but not least, subscribe to Abigail Page Designs if you love all things gardening, home decorating, organizing, and cleaning. I love you all and have a great rest of your day. Bye!